of the um, study of optics um, or the history of microscopes um, for the microscope lab. So the study of optics um, began over 2,000 years ago with Ptolemy who discovered um, how a stick who that is you know partially in air, partially in water, appears to bend um, when it's placed in a different substance. So the light travels at different speeds through different substances and it makes the straw here look broken or a stick to look bent. Um, but uh, why was that important? He was able to calculate the refraction constant of water um, from that and it's just like a better understanding of how light moves through different substances. Um, who made the first pair of eyeglasses? When, uh, when were these made? Silvino de Marte uh, was attributed to make the first pair of eyeglasses in the 13th century, but this turns out to be false. So if you uh, research this a little bit, it was actually um, found to be a hoax. So um, one of the people that uh, perpetuated this hoax was um, just somebody who had found a... Um, Epitaph, like they said that they had found an epitaph that stated, here lies Silvino de Marte, um, the creator of eyeglasses. Um, and it just, it didn't, it didn't uh, actually check out, it didn't pan out. And when he was questioned about it, he said that with the renovations of the church, the epitaph was destroyed. Um, so it, it actually turned out to just be a complete bubkiss. Um but interesting. So then uh, Roger Bacon is the next person that's more heavily attributed to have actually researched optics and created spectacles. So um, he wrote the Opus Magis in manuscripts in 1266. So um, 1266 was a really, really long time ago. And this um, magnum opus, who's you know, clearly it's typewritten. That was um, transcribed from uh, Mag Opus Magis, um, the, all those manuscripts, and put into type print in 1733. So, but Roger Bacon definitely did have um, actual manuscripts discussing optics and their behavior and microscopes. So, oh, and eyeglasses. So, okay. So, who first invented? The, the actual microscope as we kind of know it today. It's, it's almost like more like a telescope. Um, Zacharias Janssen and his father Hans. So Zacharias was just a teenager and Hans was his father and that was attributed in 1519. But um, this also uh, is who you know at the time. So um, Janssen uh, was attributed because there was a Dutch diplomat, William Boreal, who wrote about um, Janssen and his son and the microscope that they had created to the French king. So at the time, who was in um, charge of recording science and progress were nobility and scholars. Um, but there was this other guy, Hans Lippershe, who... Um, had been in Germany, born and raised in Germany, moved to Holland, and had also had um, made spectacles, binoculars, and early microscopes and telescopes. So who really did it? Um, you know, it's hard to say um, who, and maybe they had just contributed to each other's research because they were in the same region. Um, so what's the difference between a simple microscope versus a compound microscope? Um, what it means by simple is just it's composed of just one lens and an example of a simple microscope would be like a magnifying glass or a monocle. A compound microscope is composed of two or more lenses um, and they're connected by a hollow tube so what we would think of as a telescope or a compound light microscope. Anton von Leeuwenhoek uh, was a pioneer in the building of the first real microscopes in uh, 1670s and uh, why was Leeuwenhoek uh, so epic? Well, he was able to grind and polish the glass to make it um, much, much superior lenses. 
Um, they could magnify up to 270 times life size. And just to put that into perspective, um, the, the scopes that are in our lab, which sometimes also seem crappy, but they can magnify up to a thousand times life size. So 270 times is pretty amazing for that time period. Um, but again, it was 1670s. So, but what did he see? He was like one of the first scientists to actually see um, bacteria and yeast and small eukaryotic organisms swimming in the water, uh, like pond water. So he called those microbes animalcules and he watched blood moving through capillaries of fish tails. He um, actually was one of the first people to ever look at human sperm and dog sperm underneath the microscope as well. So um, he was looking at cells, but Robert Hooke was around the same time period. He published um, it, his first work, Micrographia in 1665, and he recorded lots and lots of fantastic images um, hand-drawn pictures and diagrams while he was looking at different cells. So, you know, like we do cheek cells and stuff like that in the lab oftentimes, not during COVID, but, you know, most of the time. Um, and they do look kind of like empty space. Like you'll see maybe a nucleus, but you don't get to see everything else going on. Um, but that's why he termed the word cell was because it mostly looked like empty space, but pretty cool. Um, so those guys were big. Uh, in the field of microscopy and its first birthing and um, here are the resources that I used and I hope this was helpful and um, hope you guys have a good rest of your semester. Bye!